Now let's look at Thailand. The Southeast Asian nation got two prime ministers today. One was elected by the parliament after months of stalling. They had an election in the month of May, but a big number of their parliamentarians are appointed by the army and these members stalled the selection of a prime minister. Today it finally happened. But this is not the prime minister the country is focusing on. Today an old face returned to Bangkok, their former prime minister Thakshin Shinawa. He's back after 15 long years. He was in self in a self-imposed exile, and he has ended it. Shinawa boarded a private jet in Singapore and landed in Bangkok, and within hours surrendered himself to Thailand's Supreme Court. We'll get to why in a bit, but first let's look at his return and the reception that he got. His supporters were ecstatic. Red shirts lined Bangkok streets. That's the color of Shinawa's party, the Few Thai Party. People were waving and cheering and chanting his name. Now, this is a man convicted of corruption, a fugitive politician, but today he was treated like a rock star. I'm delighted. I've been thinking about him all this time, no matter which land he was in, where he was. I love only Thaksin. I'm so glad that he's back. I wanted him to return ages ago because I love him so much, so genuine that I feel like he's a second father to me. And he knew how to play to the gallery. As soon as Shinawa stepped out of the airport, he took a knee. He bowed and offered tributes to a portrait of Thailand's king and queen. That's right. The first thing Thakshin Shinawa does upon his return is pay his respects to the royal family of Thailand. It's dramatic. It's also an astute political move because it's exactly this attitude that just secured his party, Thailand's prime ministership. Remember what I said at the beginning of the story. Thailand got two prime ministers today. Shinawa's party is called the Few Thai Party. Their candidate, Sretha Thavisin, is now the prime, minist prime minister designate. The decision has come after months of deadlock. And they did not even win the election. The winners were another party called the Move Forward Party. They got the highest number of seats. They had a progressive agenda. They challenged Thailand's military and monarchy, perhaps... They're pay paying the price for that because challenging the monarchy is dangerous ground in Thailand. The country has strict, archaic laws about respecting the royal family. And the Move Forward Party wanted to change this. The last government in Bangkok was backed by the military. They were never going to let this anti-monarchy party come to power. So they disqualified the prime ministerial candidate and stalled the democratic process. It's this deadlock that Shinawa's party, the Few Thai party, exploited. They got the second highest number of seats. Now here's the twist. Initially, they had formed an alliance with the Move Forward party. They were alliance partners. But when they saw it wasn't going anywhere, they pulled out. They cobbled together a new alliance with pro-military parties. And today they won the prime ministerial nomination. This was pure political opportunism. It has left some of their supporters unhappy. But others understand that it's pragmatic and it paved the way for Thaksin Shinawa's return. I don't have ill feeling towards Thaksin, but I do feel somewhat disappointed with the Pyo Thai party. However, I also do understand that the situation forced them to take this path. No matter what, Thailand's junta-appointed Senate will not vote for the original government alliances. It's just impossible. The few thighs struck while the iron was hot. They secured the prime ministership and Thaksin Sinawa is back. Now you may wonder, why is he back? He served as Thailand's prime minister between 2001 and 2006. Then there was a military coup and he was ousted. He was accused of corruption, disloyalty to the Thai monarchy and abuse of power. In 2008, he fled the country to avoid a jail sentence. And he's been living in exile ever since. Now the man has returned. From the airport, he went straight to Thailand's Supreme Court. And there he was sentenced to eight years in prison. This on a day when his party's candidate is chosen as the next prime minister. All of this sounds suspicious, and that's because it is. There have been rumors about a deal between his party and the military. 
Shinawa is expected to get a light sentence considering his age. He's 74 years old, but he may be exploring an easier way out, securing a royal pardon. One word from Thailand's overly powerful monarch will spell the end of all his problems, which explains what he did at the airport. The elaborate act of worship, the tributes to the royals. It seems like an episode of Game of Thrones. Betrayal, puppet lawmakers, a return from exile, and swearing fealty to a king. But this is not fiction. This is Thailand in 2023, a country caught in medieval politics and a leader making the most of it.